Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a potluck dish carrier. So much fun when you're headed over to someone's house for a dinner or a potluck, whatever the case may be. Now this is a cute, cute bowl cover that's available as a separate video. Be sure to subscribe to the Shabby Fabrics YouTube channel so that you never miss one of our fun DIY or quilt videos. So we've got our dish, we've covered it up, and now we're ready to go. Let me show you how this works and then I'll show you how to make it. So you come in here and we have a couple D-rings on two opposing corners. We loop that through here. And then there's a D-ring on the other side and we loop that through here. And now you're ready to go. You could even tie a cute little bow here if you wanted to for the complete girly effect or just carry it like this. So let's put that aside and I'll show you how to get going on this. Now the collection is Vintage Picnic by Bonnie and Camille from Moda Fabrics. Super cute collection. It's great for summertime. Um, just cheerful projects. So the first thing that you want to do is grab two pieces of fabric and fusible fleece. And we have those cut to 18 by 18. Now the measurements will be available on the Shabby Fabrics homepage. At the very bottom, click on free downloads and we'll have all the measurements there for you. So you, I have two pieces that are 18 by 18 and a piece of fusible fleece as well. Now just keep in mind that fusible fleece has fusible webbing on just one of the sides. So I would of course take this to my pressing mat. Starting at the middle, I would iron. On the opposite side, as I flip this over, you could use a basting spray. This is the June Taylor basting spray. If you do use this, just know it can be fumey. You do want to cover your workspace and probably do this outside or at least with a window open because it can be fumey. Um, you'd spray that on and bring this fabric over the top here. And again, I like to just start at the center and just smooth everything out. We went ahead and quilted our um, dish carrier. So what you'll do, let me show what that's gonna look like. I don't know if you can see it here, but we simply got our long ruler and our friction pen. You know I love that. And I love that it disappears. So there's the center. And what we actually did was measured over from the center and just drew a line. In fact, I can just show you where we where we had quilted so you can see it. And I can iron it away. And then measure over two inches, and so on and so forth. And come back this way and then simply turn. Same thing, measuring corner to corner, measuring over two inches and just do a straight stitch. Let me just iron that all the way because that's the piece that we'll be using moving forward. So now that that's quilted and ready to go, the next thing that we did with our um, carrier was we created a binding. So with binding, now you may already have your favorite technique for binding. If you do, just do it. Uh, you need about 80 inches of binding to go around the perimeter. Um, if you don't have a favorite method of binding, I will show you what that is. So these are two and a half inch strips, just a normal binding strip. Splice those strips as you normally would. And you can just start on any corner and leave a good opening. Now, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come in here and show you how to miter a corner. If you've never mitered a corner, I'm give you a chance to learn how to do that today. It's a really professional finished look. I love it. So let's just start. We're going to leave this flap open and you'll find out why later. Let's just get started sewing. And what I'm going to do, rather than sew all the way to that corner, is I'm going to say at least a quarter of an inch away. I like a nice healthy quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to mark that probably about right there. I'm just going to mark that. And I might even just put a pin in that because I just don't want that to shift. You could pin this whole thing at this point if you wanted to. Let's take that to the sewing machine. And I want to show you how to miter a corner. So we'll just start sewing. And that's my target. I'm going to stop, back up. Okay. And I'm just going to cut my threads. Some people 
don't cut their threads and they're able to kind of keep it going. I I just like to, to kind of cut the threads, step away now, plus because I want you to be able to see this. I'm going to lay that. Do you see the line here that's created from the edge? I'm going to just, you see how I did that? I just pivot that kind of around my finger and now it's still an extension. It's an extension of this. So you can see the line just continues. Now I'm going to fold this back on top of itself so that that fold is right along that edge. So I'm creating that 90 degree turn. Now I'm gonna definitely pin this. I don't want that to go anywhere while I take that to the sewing machine and kind of get going down this road here on this side. And I will start again about a quarter of an inch. I can feel where that other fabric ended. You wanna start about that point, if not just a little bit after it, and we start going again. Let's do that together. I want to show you what that's going to look like. I'm going to reinforce that. And then I just keep going. And as you can imagine, I'll come down to this corner, out of that corner, and come all the way around to this side. Now I've done that ahead of time, and I want to show you how to finish it at that point. It's a really cool way to finish binding. I love it. I just recently learned how to do this. Um, it's a little bit more challenging than the other way I had been doing binding, but I love the look and it's worth the extra work. But before I show you that, see how it creates that miter corner? So that's a really neat thing. Now let's put that aside. As I mentioned, we had done one ahead of time where we came all the way around. We are, we're at this place right here, like this. Okay, so we've got all this extra. Now the first thing you want to do is remember what we cut the binding strips to, two and a half inches. So if you use two and a quarter inch binding strips, some people do, you will use two and a quarter instead of the two and a half. If you're doing two and a half inch binding strips like I do, then this measurement that's coming up will be two and a half inches, two and a half. This is open, this is open. I'm going to lay those two on top of each other and I'm going to bring in my small ruler. I can see where the binding started and I'm going to measure over to where it's two and a half inches, right there. Okay. With my scissors now, I'm going to go ahead, and you know what else you know what I'm going to do? Just so I get a straight line, let me do this. I want to make sure I have a nice square cut. There we go. I want, want to make sure, goodness knows, measure twice, cut once. All right, now what do I do with this? Watch this closely, because the first time I saw this, even the second time, it kind of threw me a little bit. It wasn't intuitive. Now with this facing you, just like me, just like, less like you're, you're seeing this here, you're going to turn this away once, turn this away a second time. Then, with the piece on the right, you're going to open this like this, okay? Now this is the awkward part. Is it, it? It's like someone stepping on your skirt. <laughs> you know. You know what I'm saying? Is it's like how do you work this through? I just kind of relieve the pressure there by folding that over. And this, there's my two. My see that nine degrees right there. I'm gonna pin that. Okay. Now. I will just lay this out. It's definitely awkward. I'm not trying to even remotely claim it's not because it, it just is. I'm laying this as flat as I can. There's my corner and there's my other corner right. I might even mark that. Right there. So I'm going to measure from here to here. like that. I'm going to pin that, take that to my machine. Let's just do this together. Very awkward, but I love the finished look. I'm going to take this away because I just want, I want more space. Okay, let's anchor that. Make sure everything is smooth. I can see 
see that corner now, so I'm just going to go for that corner. All right. Now let's take out our pins. Let's trim most of that bulk away. Boy, I can barely, that thread is so coordinated, I can barely see where I'm going here. Let me do this by hand. That superior thread's thread is just so blends in with this fabric that I can just about cut my threads. Okay, that's gone. Now, go ahead and just press that seam open. Again, awkward, but um, I can't wait to show you the finished look. You'll know that extra effort is worth it. Okay. So now, now, we just pin, and then we'll just continue sewing um, that binding down. And then at that point, let's just pretend that we sewed that down. You'll simply turn the binding over to the back, and this is where I love to use the binding clips versus pins. They're just so wonderful to work with. The pins, I end up poking myself and then I bleed on my project. So I love these. And if you'll be, if you're going to be sewing this by hand, well even if you aren't sewing this by hand, the clips come in, they come in handy. And then you'll just continue. So you see how that works. And that's just going to hold up. So at this point I can either take this to the sewing machine and just stitch in the ditch, which is certainly convenient, easy to do, and that's stitching right in that little valley right there. Or with needle and thread, I can go at that point from behind, and I'm just coming in here, and I'm gonna just stitch this down by hand in the back. That's your option at that point, that's up to you. Once that part is done, though, we're ready to move on to the straps and the D-ring. So let's go to that place now. So let's get that out so you can see how that works. Now I've put one on in the corner, but I'm going to show you how these work. For your D-rings and your uh, pieces in the corner, you'll need two squares of fabric that are each 4 by 4 You'll simply fold this in half and press and then open that up and you'll fold to the center, fold to the center again, fold in half, press. So you're ready to go. You'll take your D ring now I'm just going to, you've got a couple options. You can just fold them both under like this or you can tuck them both toward the middle. In fact, I think I will just tuck them both toward the middle. I just think it has a nice finished look. Let's just go do that real quick. Oop, that's a lot of fabric. My machine knows it too. <laughs> Now what we'll do is in the corner, you see how that D-ring kind of just fits nicely in the corner. I'll draw this on there so you see the shape. This is where all the stress, the strap and the D-rings are where all the stress will be on the casserole carrier because that's what will be bearing the weight. So rather than just running one straight stitch, we made a nice kind of box stitch. I'll just draw that in there so you see what that looks like and with a crisscross. So we really got in there with some, some stitching and got that secured. Okay, So let me just pin that into place. And that's exactly what I would do, is just take this to the sewing machine now and do that box with the X and the same down here, the box with the X. With the long strap, the measurements will be on the website of what you need to do. We created the strap in the same way, a long length, fold it in half, Fold the, uh, the two sides toward the middle, pressed in half, and we went ahead and we stitched along that. You could do the same thing with the D-ring as go ahead and stitch along that just because just it has a nice finished look. Now, 
we went ahead and tucked that end under just because that's the raw edge. Now this is important, the way you put the straps on. Notice how the D-rings are going away from the center. This is the same way. You've got your raw edge down. Okay, and I'm going to pin this into position. Same story. We drew the box and the X. Now, this is make sure you don't get a twist on this. This is going to come up and around like this. Do you see how that's happening? Not, not like this, but we're coming up and over, and this at end, I just want you to see this, tucks in like this. Okay, so that raw edge is down again, pin, draw your X and sew to secure. And then as you saw in the very beginning, um, to actually put your casserole dish in there, you'll just gather up, your dish is in the middle, you gather this up, insert this through your D-ring, insert this through your D-ring, hold it up and you're complete. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this potluck carrier from Shabby Fabrics.